Our dear viewers and listeners, we greet you all in the precious and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is the day the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to today's Bible study from Dominion Church International. We ask you to invite somebody to join us. Because your life will not remain the same. Let's open up today's session with prayer. Let's pray. Precious Lord, we thank you yes. for your grace, your love and mercy. Mm. Even as we yield ourselves to the reading of your word, instruct us, yes, guide us, yes, speak to us, yes, change us, yes, open the eyes of our understanding, yes, reveal Jesus to us, mm. glorified yes, as Lord and God mm. in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Today's text will be taken from the book of Romans, chapter 5. And verse 12. And this is what the Bible says. Therefore, just as through one man's sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all sin. This one scripture acts as the hinge to a huge door that opens our understanding to the whole story from Adam to Christ, basically displaying to us the history of humanity. Our understanding of, hum of condemnation and salvation is hinged on this scripture. And it gives us God's perspective as to how he groups humanity. Basically, God looks at humanity through two men. One is Adam, and the other is Jesus Christ. So, through these two, they are the representation of all humanity. So, whatever Adam did affected me affected you and affected whoever is living now. In the same vein, whatever Jesus Christ did affects those who believe in him. You see, everyone enters into this world through Adam. So there is nothing you can do about it. We are all born in Adam. But later we shall see something else that Christ has entered into this world. And where Adam disobeyed, Adam, Jesus obeyed. And through his obedience, those who believe in him, it is credited to them for righteousness. And this is what we call the doctrine of imputation. So, imputation simply means to credit to someone's account or to charge to an account of somebody. For some of us, 
for many of us that are watching or listening to us, you have one account or the other for so many things. And if you pay bills, they may be power bills, they may be water bills, there is an account that is charged to. If you have a bank account, account and money is placed onto there, that is a credit to that account. If you have a mobile phone and you have opened an account to it, to be able to re you have a facility to be able to receive or give or pass on money. So that means you have an account. So we have so many accounts. There are social media accounts. So everywhere we go, what we do is open accounts. So when you have an account, then you get into the transactional business of crediting and debiting. Or what we call adding or removing. So it is that same thought that we bring here. And in theology, there are basically three imputations. The first imputation is the imputation of of Adam's sin to the entire human race. So what that means is that when Adam sinned, all of us sinned. Now you may say that's not fair. It would have been just Adam alone. I draw your attention to some of us who love sport. You see, where you have a group sport, it's a football. If there is a handball by one of the players and it results into a penalty, so what happens? Because of one person's mistake, the entire team loses. So we say it's not fair. Why do we say it is fair for football and it is not fair for humanity? You see, even when we go to politics, the people that we vote into power, the decisions and the choices they make may actually impact not only us but entire generations. So there are so many examples, so many incidences in life of the decision of one man or one woman or one family member that impacts an entire generation. So what happens? That is what we call imputation. In Adam, when he sinned, all of us sinned. That is the imputation. Now, that is the negative one. And before you reject the whole idea of imputation, uh, there are two positive ones. So I talked about three. The first one is the negative one. Where the sin of Adam was imputed to all mankind. But let's look at the positive one. This is the second one. The sins of all the people who 
ever believe in Jesus Christ. All their sins are imputed to Christ on the cross. Look at what the scriptures say. 2 Corinthians 5.21 The Bible says him who knew no sin God made him sin for us. What is he trying to say? Christ who did not know sin. When we believe in him then God imputes on him all our sins. So he became God in his foreknowledge did impute on him the sin of all mankind. Now that is amazing when you look at it. It is what Peter talks about in first Peter chapter 2 verse 24. Where he says who himself bore our sins in his own body. That we having died to sins may live to righteousness by whose stripes you are healed. So your healing comes because of his stripes. Your righteousness your life comes because the sin was imputed to him. So there was a transaction, an exchange of death for life. His life for your death. And that is amazing. Paul, Peter expounds on the same in 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 18 and it says for Christ Christ also suffered once for sins the just for the unjust that he may bring us to God. Being put to death in the flesh but made alive in the spirit. This means that all the sins of the people who would ever believe in him God transferred them. He credited them to Christ. So he literally bore the sins of everyone on the cross. So that is the second one. The third one is the imputation of perfect righteousness of Jesus Christ to those that believe in him. And how does this happen? This happens through his perfect obedience to the will of God. Because he obeyed God to the Detail. Now God imputes to us His righteousness. That's amazing. Because like Adam's sin is imputed on the entire race. The sins of all believers in Christ are imputed on Jesus Christ. And it is against this background that we have this text today which begins with the word therefore just as through one man which man is he talking about? The man that is being talk, referred to here is Adam. And he says, therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world. And death through sin. And thus 
desperate woman. Because all sinned. Now, this goes on and on. In your text, if you are reading, you will see a dash after the word all sinned. Now, that punctuation is not in the original Greek. But it serves a purpose for us that are reading this text. Because if you are careful, you will notice that there is a change of the line of thought that Paul is bringing to us. So it is like the next sentences. In verse 22, seems to bring another line of thought. And this line of thought that he began will only come later in verse 18. Look at what I'm trying to say. Look at what he says, verse 13. He says, for until the law of sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed where there is no law. And he says, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. Even over all those who had not sinned. According to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. But the free gift is not like the offense. For if by the one man offense many died, much more the grace of God. Gift by the grace of the one man Jesus Christ abounded to many. And verse 16 says, And the gift is not like that which came through one who sinned. For the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation. But the free gift, which came from many offenses, resulted in justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned through one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in this life through the one Jesus Christ. Now, he goes to verse 18 and then he says, therefore, through one man's offense, judgment, basically he's now linking 18 to what we saw in 12. So, what are we trying to see here? He then expounds on that one and says it came to all men resulting in condemnation. Even so through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men. Resulting in justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. Also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. And here in 19 is where he seems to crown what he had begun in 12. But just follow me because in the next text, or in the next session, we will be getting these verses that we just read and tie them all up together to make sense. But let's go back to the hinge. Because in 19, 
He comes back to say, for by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. Now, one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. And that comes by imputation. So, let's go back to 12. What does it say in 12? Agambachi. He begins in 12 by telling us that therefore, now what is he trying to say here? Therefore brings a connection. And what is it? It's like a bridge connecting two islands. So what is trying to say here? He's trying to connect the next verses. To what we saw from verse 6 to verse 11. Where we saw God's love being demonstrated. And how was God's love demonstrated? We saw that God's love was demonstrated in various ways. In verse 6, we saw that Christ died for the ungodly. He died for the helpless. In verse 8, we saw that he died for the sinners. In verse 10, Mukumi, we saw that he died for the enemies of God. And the result of his death, verse 9 tells us that he has justified. So who did he justify? He justified the helpless, the ungodly, the sinful men, who were enemies of God. And having done that, verse 10 says he now reconciles them. He, he did not just justify them, but he reconciles them to a holy God. So he now becomes the mediator between men and God, between a sinful man and the holy God. So now we come to the question, how can one man by his death reconcile so many people remove their sins with just one death. How, how is it possible that one man dies and this act of his death he is able to justify he is able to reconcile all men as many as believe in him. How is this possible? So this verse 12 begins to explain this question. How Jesus Christ hanging on the cross for six hours and six hours, let me explain, the three hours was what man did to him. The other three hours from midday to three when everything got dark is what God did to him. So there was what men did and there's what God did. And all this was the entire package that brought redemption to us. So look at what, how does this happen? That he, through his death, can now credit our bankrupt situations with his righteousness. This is how it happens. Christ, Christ reverses the curse of disobedience that Adam 
Adam one had placed on mankind. So in one act, he is able now to accomplish salvation for all mankind. And this happens because of what we call the view of representation. So it is like one coin having two sides. So on one side you have Adam. On the other side you have Jesus Christ. And the point is that what Adam did affected many. So, just as what Adam did affected me, in the same way, what Jesus did then affects many. Because God looks at humanity through the representation of two persons. What he sees is Adam and Christ. So you are either in Adam or you are in Jesus Christ. So what Adam did affects everyone who is in Adam. In the same vein, what Jesus Christ did then affects everyone who is in Jesus Christ. And that's why Paul then begins in verse 12 and says, just as through one man. Sin entered into the world. And what is he trying to say? It's like Adam, Adam was the opening. Was the floodgate that brought sin into the world system. It's like sin broke a dam and poured into the world. Into the life of man. And sin did not come alone. Sin came with death. This is what Paul tells us in Romans chapter 6 and verse 16. He says, do you not know that whom you present yourselves slaves to obey? Who was that one slaves? Whether of sin leading to death, or of obedience leading to righteousness. Look at how it works. Sin comes with death. In the other way, obedience comes with righteousness. So, what we see here is that sin will always result in death. Romans 6.23 tells us that the wages of sin is death. So sin carries a penalty. And that penalty is death. And this begins from the very beginning, Genesis chapter 217. God tells mankind that the day you eat of this fruit you will surely die. So when man disobeyed at that point death entered into the world. Following sin, following the act of disobedience. And this death took on different dimensions. So there was the physical death. So I believe at that point man began to age. So the aging process kicked in. But more than that, there is the spiritual death, the separation. 
ne walwo no kufa ko moyo kwa wulibwa where by now man's spirit became unregulated kati omoyo go muntu ngate guli ka chita cha te guli ka gufuga because the relationship with god had been severed banga okuse chimune katonda kwali kuvudde wo and then you have what we call the eternal ne kuj ne tui tui na chiri cha chuli o death o kufo kwe mire so this would ultimately lead kati chindo mungomerero to the second death che chitui che chikuingiza mu kufo kwo kubiri we are for all time ngakati e mire mbe mbe for all eternity e mire mbe jonna you depending on the choices that have been made okusinjira kusana wo kuokola will spend eternity ogenda kusikumale bisera bi bela ko fire oba munyanje eliye yomo with the lord oba wa mune mukaba wa amen it is just the sin of one man nenga omuya yonona which results into all this mwe mwava mu bino byonna what is the lesson for us what do you got it says sin may look small in our eyes oyinzo kunyome chibi mu maso go but in the eyes of god it is huge naye atekatonda ye chibwa chibwa it is an offense against his person it is high treason in heaven musango gwanna mugomola it brings the curse of the law upon it che chikusake chikolimo chokumenya mateka it brings death with it era chijano kufa so the next time omulundi okudako you are tempted to even go near sin wesembeze chibi or the thought of sin obano kuchido woza ko kuri the bible says free every appearance of evil bible yekulabula duka eri buli chefana nyirizange chibi why because sin kubange chibi is like a baby alinga mwano mweli when you nurse it it grows bulibwo muyo nso mulabirira akula and soon you be overwhelmed era tukana kusukka ko you become a slave no fuko mudu of that which you pay attention to okuweleze echo cho wadde ye sin does not come alone it comes with a twin sister it's like a siamese twin chibita ja yeka aliko mulongo we bonate batosobola kubaula it is comes with death now the two cannot be separated the two move together one acts after the other oli agoberero ono and even it just even a mindset katine mundo wozeno paul comes to us paul akoma wo Romans chapter 8 verse 6. Balumi munano bo kaza. And he says for the mindset of the flesh. Endoze ne yewa deye yokufuma. Not the act, the mindset. Bagamba ndoza sibi ko bwa. The flesh is death. Endoza yewo mubidi ekomekereza mukufa. But the mindset of the spirit is life and peace. Na yendoza yo muyo elimo bulamu ne mirembe. So if you're living according to the flesh. Gobo uri wo goberera mubidi. You die, you must die. But if you live according to the spirit you put to death the deeds of the flesh and then you live amen now this is very important because we are living at a time where there are different schools of thought and there are three views that i want to talk about that the first one from a theological term is what we call pelagianism now pelagianism looks at what adam did and says no what adam did gamba adam ono byakola He's just set an example as a model ye kati ya take off fetulabire kuyi so now people sin because they are just imitating ye kati abona abonona bakopa ye now this goes contrary ate chino chochi kontanira the text that we just read e jawa ndi kwache tusomye look at what verse 12 says dayo twetegereza ko says therefore ndi olwe songe just as through one man ngwa kubwo muntu omu sin HIV entered the world bwechayingira munsi so the entrance of sin into the world echingize HIV munsi is through one man oliya yonona adam ya adam and he says and death 
Philosim. Nebakugam ba o kufane kuyingido lwe jibi. So and says, and thus, ida, death reigned, or oh. death spread to all men. O kufane kufugida, o wane kubu na kubantubu na. So Adam was the conduit through which death then spreads to all men. Adam lwe ruji o kufane kwa iti lwe kubu na kubantubu What brings death to all men is sin. And so, here, he says, why then does death spread to all men? And he says, because all sin. So, Pelagianism goes against what scripture states. Adam was not just a model. Adam no. Adam was the channel through whom sin and death Adam entered. And death now reigns. And death now spreads to all men. Because all sinned. So he did not just set an example. <laughs> no, death now spreads because sin is present. So that one is certain. Now there is what we call the semi Pelagianism. Now, semi Pelagianism says. Adam sinned. And because he sinned, this was charged to everyone's account. Which is true. But Mazima and is factual according to scripture. But they add that from conception to conception. And so this sin was not propagated down the chain. So it was not a sin nature issue. No, the sin nature ended with Adam. So going down the, the, the lane for the next generation, this was simply weakened human nature. So what that means, and just taking that line of thought, it, it, and why it has a tragic end, it perceives that you can do good without God. So you don't need to be regenerated. So within you is the ability to do good. But we have seen from scripture and Paul explains to us Roman 3 says there is none righteous. <laughs> there, there is none seeking after God. So all, all of us, all of us, by nature, cannot be accepted to God. There is nothing good we can do. And that is why righteousness by faith is critical. So when you were credited with the sin nature, that's what we call the fall of man. It was an actual a big fall. It wasn't a trip. No, it was a big fall. And why do I say it was a big fall? It, it impacted everything about humanity. Your very nature. The way you think, the way you feel, the way you exercise judgment was all impacted by this sin nature. So, there is nothing about you that is good towards God. 
Katonda chala bantu chidunji. Even they elect. Before they come to Jesus Christ, are enemies of God. That's what Ephesians chapter 2 tells us. So, this school or this view does not align to scripture. Now, there is what we call the reformed view. Now, the reformed view simply states that Adam's sin was charged to everyone whoever lived. And this sin nature is subsequently passed down to every person that is born in the human race. So, by nature, that means we are all born corrupt. We are all born depraved. And this impacts our entire person. So, except for the grace of God, you cannot even respond to God. So, there is nothing about us that is acceptable that can draw us back to God. Now, you may ask the question, and this is a question that has been asked. Then if that is the case, then why would God condemn? Because how about there was no law and there is no, no way we could respond. And we did in deeper into that. Because here the Bible talks about from Adam to Moses. And he says all those sinned. And the question is how would they sin without the law? Because the law came with Moses. And it is Paul who expands this for us. That it is before the law actually came, God had written his law in our hearts. And it is against that that we see that God will judge. And he will judge those that received the law by the law. And those that are without the law will be judged without the law. Why? Because in chapter 2 verse 14, he says, for the Gentiles who do not have the law, do instinctively the things of the law. These not having the law are the law to themselves. So before God gave the law to Moses, he had already written the law upon the conscience of men. So when men violated their conscience, they were sinning against God. And that is the reason why in Romans chapter 5 verse 14, the Bible says, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam until Moses. He says in that scripture, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam until Moses. And if death reigned, then that means sin reigned. Why? Because it is sin that brings death. So, what am I trying to say? Because of one man, sin entered into the world. And death through sin. And this death then spread to all men. Because all sinned. 
Then it was inevitable that through one man, life would come to all men who would believe in him. And they received the credit of righteousness. Why? Because in the eyes of God, humanity has two faces. Adam and Jesus Christ. So let me ask you today, where do you fall? Adam or Jesus Christ. If you are in Adam, then everything that Adam represents affects you. And that means sin will reign and death will reign. But I have good news for you. There is another person Jesus Christ. Yes, so Christ. And through his life of obedience, righteousness is credited. Men who were previously sinful and now justified. So you have a simple choice to make. Will you be found in Adam? Or will we be found in Jesus Christ? For those of you that have never been found in Jesus Christ, let me give you a scripture. It says there is now therefore no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. You can move from the side of Adam and being affected by what Adam did and represents. And be found in Christ. Receiving justification. Receiving the righteousness of God. Credited to you. By faith. Will you rise now? For those of you who say, I am a sinner. I need to cross over from the representation of Adam to the representation of Jesus Christ. Why don't you say this prayer with me? Say, Father in heaven, you are the justifier of mankind. And you have placed before me this day Adam Adam and Jesus Christ. I know that I was born in this world. And by the fact that I'm born, I am in Adam. But I choose this day to be born again and cross over from Adam, Adam to be born and be found in Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, you are the Savior of the world. And today, I receive you in my life as my Lord and personal Savior. Fill me with your spirit and help me to live for you both now and forevermore. Amen. 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 If you say that prayer from the bottom of your heart, from the eyes of divinity, you are now in Christ. And if any man be in Christ, the scripture tells us you are a new being. You are a new creation. All, all things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Not tomorrow. Right now. 
kati now to you who is born again wenga wazali bo mulondo goko bidi this is exciting news kana bolye goma lu because you are no longer in adam kubanga tocha ali mu adam you are in christ oli mu christ so his obedience o kugonda kwe everything that he did bulicho nachi yakola everything that he suffered bulicho na chiyita mu kubona amulaktsio now we charge you Chukukoma so your life cannot be the same because he whom the sun sets free is free indeed. be free spread this good news be free to live according to the purpose that god saved you to accomplish in this earth god richly bless you mukama kuwa from dominion church kuwa mkanisa ya dominion it's been a pleasure having you today kiwa de cha mkisa nyo kuba nawe we're saying shalom ebile bejibena god bless you mukama kuwa mkisa